Okay. Let's, uh, where am I? Okay. Out of order. Let's do this. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Michael Markowski. Welcome to my studio. Today, we're going to recreate another painting by another one of my favorite artists. Today, we're go going to look at Henrietta Shore again. And we're going to paint her painting White Orchid from 1930, or circa 1930. I love this painting. We're also going to do a little something maybe a bit different as we approach today's painting. Um, and we did a, a, a painting by Henrietta Shore earlier this week. Uh, oh, it's upstairs. I really like how it turned out. Um, and it was our version of this painting, My Cat from the same era, maybe possibly done a little bit later. Um, so this is, kind of, I think, a really nice complement here of the flower and the cat. Um, two things that are kind of near and dear to her and are for kind of frequent subject matter. She did a lot of flowers, less landscapes, um, and more and more abstraction towards the end of her life. She did do also a lot of portraiture. But anyway, we'll get to that. Let's look at the plan for today's episode. We're going to get the image on the canvas. We're going to stain it with, I think, maybe a different color, perhaps. I don't know. Let's think about it. Let's talk about it. Um, I probably won't talk much about her biography because we I probably went on way too long on Tuesday. So you can always go back and watch that episode if you want to know all about her. Um, we'll do... That's what I'm thinking. Maybe the imprimatur and underpainting will combine, and then we'll go back and forth, back and forth. <sighs> I'd like to say two and a half hours, if we can do it. That would be great. Um, this is when we finish side by side, so you can always jump to that space in the video to find out exactly using the chapters in the playlist. Um, also, if you want to support the channel with these, uh, just by subscribing, hitting the like button, the notification bell, commenting on this video and previous videos, all of that helps big time. And let your friends know. Uh, take a photograph of what you've created and upload it to our Facebook group. I'll show you that in a moment. And also, if you want to leave a small donation, consider leaving one through PayPal. You could use Super Chat, although they take like 40% of your donation. So probably a better... One would be to use the e-transfer through my email, which is on my website, that link's below, or by contacting me through the Facebook group. Um, so, let's, um, let's go to our first step here. We're going to do our image transfer. We're going to get the image onto the canvas, and maybe I'll just show you what that means when I say the image. So here's the original, and then here's the outline, which I did on my iPad Pro. Um, so I've got that downloaded. Here's our Facebook group. Look at this. I think we're at 780 people. I don't know what's going on, but things are exploding. So let's, uh, here's the Dropbox folder. And if you look in the Dropbox folder, you'll see this file, the same folder that had uh, last week's painting. And so here's the outline that you can print out just on your regular inkjet printer at home or your laser printer at work or whatever. And, um, yeah, so let's look at how we would get this on the canvas. So, what I've got here is a freshly gessoed 9 by 12 sized canvas. And I gessoed a whole bunch of canvases the other day. So this one's nice and ready to go. It's even, I, I added, so they come pre-gessoed and I added another layer of gesso on top. And gave it a little quick sanding, which is going to make for a smoother surface, which I think always makes life just a little bit easier. Now I'm going to tape it down. I think 
mid, middle of the page is middle of the canvas is fine. Now I'm going to use some carbon transfer paper, or actually technically this is graphite transfer paper. And let's put that in there. You always want to make sure the shiny side faces down. And otherwise, you, know, you can just do a little double check. Oh, okay. It is coming out onto the other side. Perfect. Okay. This is also an outline that I did two years ago. I wanted to do this episode a long time ago, and I just uh, got sidetracked with other artists, and which is sort of like a, a theme throughout her life of, well, a bit t towards the end of her life of sort of being forgotten. So it's ironic or unfortunate that I myself kind of also put her to the side temporarily while I was working on other things, but all that matters now is we're finally getting a chance to really explore her work. And couldn't have come at a better time here for Women's History Month. Um, I was, I, some of you are probably like, well, weren't we going to do a feedback episode today? <laughs> yes, I was planning on it, and then I started putting it together and realized, whoa, there's a lot of material here. I'm going to need a little more time to put that episode together. So rather than not doing an episode at all, since I'd already kind of carved today out of my schedule to do the live stream, I thought, well... I was trying to figure out when I would do this episode, so why don't we do this episode today? Okay. Oh, it's, uh, yeah, it's, well, I'll probably have to do her signature again, but that's approximately where it'll go. Okay. Paul says, I have no idea what an e-transfer is. Um, can you send me a link for that? Um, an e-transfer is something you can do with your online bank. And so you log into your bank account through the your bank's website. And it'll, it's a way that you can, in Canada we call interact e-transfers. Because every bank is different, so you, so I can't send you a link unless I know what, and well, I, even if I knew what your bank was, you'd have to log into your bank to do it. So it's a way of sending. You can send money to relatives and friends. You can pay for some things online, maybe, maybe through Etsy, perhaps. Um, but probably the easiest way to learn how to do an e-transfer would go to your bank itself and they might be able to show you how to do that. Thank you for the question. I appreciate that, Paul. Hmm. I've been painting all day. I've been teaching all day. I've been running around and here I'm painting again. So I feel like I've been looking at paint all day. So let's... Um, we got our outline here. Let's go to the next step. So usually the next, so well, the next step that we're going to do is called the imprimatura, and it's the first layer of paint that we're going to apply to the picture here. And um, this is something that artists have been doing for 600 plus years. Not everybody does it, and you don't have to do it. But let me tell you what colors. I'm going to be using for today's painting. I'm going to be using this brand. I'm not sponsored or paid by them, but I do think they work really great, especially for if you're a beginner painter. And I think you can use this paint to make professional paintings as well. However, if you want to get spend 
three times the amount of money for half the amount of paint, you could buy golden paint. It is better, objectively better. There's more pigment in the mixture, but most people aren't going to be able to tell the difference. Um, so, <coughs> excuse me. I was going to, I didn't have, that sneeze snuck up on me. I didn't have time to mute my microphone. My apology. <laughs> Liquitex you could use. You could also use Windsor & Newton. Uh, Artist Loft from Michael's Art Supply. Buzz. Peebo. Holbein. Dyler Rowney. Fevacryl. Nova Color. Chroma Color. But not Museum Color because they put too much ultramarine. Or, um, not ultramarine. Uh titanium white, into, they mix it into all the paint so we can only get a gray when we're trying to mix a black. So I find that super problematic. Now, typically what I do here is use my a warm yellow to create my imprimatura. Um, I am thinking though doing something a little bit different. I think, you know, if we look at this painting Um, I was looking at it as I was just setting up and thinking, what is this color underneath? How did she do this? I'm, I'm looking at the, the color in between the blue and the purple and the white here. And it's like a really dark greenish color. So what I'm thinking about doing is something different than what I normally do. Uh, we could just apply the the warm yellow directly onto this surface. <clears throat> yeah, Paul S. An account number is needed. You just need my email. You just use my email. I think. It's, it's way too complex to just ex to explain it over here. I don't even know how I would explain it. So I think if you wanna know how to do that, I would go to your bank um, and talk to them there. And they might wonder, hmm, what are you doing this for? Or is this some sort of scam you've got? You're, who, who are you trying to transfer money to? So, um, which would be a valid question. I, um, be careful of scams out there when you're sending money over the internet. So, um, I know Paul, you've used the PayPal many, many times. I think uh, that is just fine. You don't uh, you don't have to adopt a new system. And I I appreciate the the effort and the thought. a bit of correlence. Oh, and warm blue. Okay. Okay, so here's my colors on the palette. Um, and to do my imprimatura, I'm gonna, st I'm gonna start mixing this up as I normally do. And if you've already painted a warm yellow because you're like, well, he does the same thing every single episode, that's okay. You could, you don't have to start all over or anything. You can just keep on going and maybe just add this as a second layer. So I'm going to take my warm yellow like this and 
Let's look at that color. It's like a... You know, hmm. I am actually almost... Some, I'm just looking at this. I th yeah, okay, so let's take... Let's take a little bit of warm red. Some warm blue. Oops. And we're gonna make a, a brown, which is this is the, the you know the very traditional way of starting a painting. <clears throat> so I think it's a brown. It's almost a little bit more on the on the blue side of things. Let's add. So you can see why I typically don't do this, because it just sort of slows down the beginning of the painting. Um, when, you know, warm yellow does just fine. The reason I'm doing it today is it just seems like it's kind of close to what she did do anyway, so. And we might just leave this color as it kind of going through this painting. Let me tune those colors after. Um, so, like, we could paint <clears throat> lines in between. And I almost wonder if this is dark enough. Could be darker. We'll see. It does look like maybe I need to go darker. We'll just put a second coat of this on. and says, nice watch, Michael. Thank you. It's probably a good idea to maybe take this off. <laughs> um, it's it's fully waterproof and everything, but uh, why? One less thing to clean, right? So, let me just, if I just zoom back out, and I just want to think about is this going to be dark enough? Because basically what how she's done this painting is she's left her these lines unpainted or um, uh, unpainted and then just painted the shapes in between the lines. So are they gonna be dark enough? I don't know. Let me, let's blow dry this and let's see if, if it gets a little bit darker.
gonna do that again. I'm gonna take more blue. Let's see. Get a bit more of a greenish quality. Mostly concerned about where the lines are going to be. that's going to be okay. I could certainly go darker, but I want to go darker. Let's let's see if we can make this work. Regret this. Um, worst comes to worst, we can just draw lines over top of things, but I think I'm always interested in trying to recreate the artist's process. Okay, so now that we've got our Imprimatura done, and we're just going to skip right over the artist biography because we spent way too long on Tuesday talking about who Henrietta Shore is, and if you're interested in learning about her, I've, I've talked, I've said everything that I think there is to be said about her previously. So I'm just going to go right to the background, and you can already notice where we've, this painting has started in a different way than really we've done almost any painting we've ever done, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to do today's painting, because I always think it's interesting to see different techniques and different approaches so that you know that, you know, if one technique doesn't work for you, well, there's plenty of different ones out there that might be way better suited to you. There's nothing wrong with you. It's just finding the right one for you. So let's... Um, Let's look at this. What I want to do next is mix that background color and that blue. That's a. It's kind of like a grayish blue. So I think my my first step might be to mix a bit of black and. Um, and then I can use that to modify. So let's take a bit of cool yellow, cool blue, 
and some warm red. Let's mix this to oops. Mix that together. So we took our cool yellow, cool blue, and warm red. Now you're like, well, that looks pretty green. Yeah, totally. That's probably because I, asked, but I put a little bit more blue in there at the last second. And let's, let's put more warm red in there, which will counteract the, the green. Pretty good, pretty close. It doesn't have to be even perfect either, right? Because what we'll do next is we'll take some white and make it gray here. You can see with that gray, it does look a little bit more on the greenish side, right? So I could keep on adding some blue in there if I wanted. Although, well, yeah, it is a little bit on the greenish side. Okay, and then I'm going to take a substantial amount of cool blue. That's why I wasn't super worried about getting, you know, perfect black, because I knew it was gonna, I was going to put up way more blue in it to begin with, right? Um, okay, let's look at these side by side. I do really like this color. It's not quite the right color, but that is a nice color. Wow. Um, we still need to add a lot more white in here. And you know, as I look at that, this is going to be a little too cold. So I think we want something closer to a cobalt, which is in between our cool and warm colors. Let's put a bit more blue in there. There we go. We're gonna need all that white. And maybe then some. Okay, I'm just gonna get some more white on here because um the kind of the technique that she's painting is she's like you could kind of do this on like a velvet you know like which we're gonna do soon stay tuned for our april 1st episode april fool's day i got something i wanted to do for a long pretty much way before i even started doing these Maybe did I go too far? Let's see. Pretty close. Um, so another reason I'm making a big batch of this is because I want to be able to have a very consistent kind of uh, layer of paint. I'm also going to get a couple smaller brushes ready to go here because what I'm going to start doing is painting right around all of this. And I might have to do a second layer of this paint. I want to be careful. I want to try to do kind of sharper lines right off the bat.
So as this dries, it's probably going to go a little bit transparent again. And we might see a bit of that brown coming through. So it's just uh, a matter of... of uh, is that something you like or not? And if you don't like it, then we just add another layer. If you're okay with it, then you just leave it. One thing I want to try to avoid is ridges. I'm going to try to keep this paint uh, as... Um, and ridges will tend to build up at the edges, you know, right where we, you know, like all along those edges. So we just want to be careful. doing paintings that are that we've never done before using a technique like this this is fun I mean it's it's definitely not the way that I normally paint personally um, because I, when I usually start a painting I like to to just sort of go a little bit wild and I like to kind of just be a little looser to start the painting and not worry so much about getting the right color. And you can kind of do a little bit of that with this painting, but this one sort of requires you to be maybe a bit, have a, for there to be a bit more planning involved in the initial stages before you start and, and less kind of improvisation as you go. I mean, having said that, you could modify this background we could paint this whole thing and be like you know what let's put an orange background instead i don't like the blue there wouldn't be anything wrong with that it just um and who knows maybe that's what she did here too What's interesting, you know, as I'm painting this, I think to myself, this is actually probably one of the most common ways a lot of people do make paintings. Um, so it's kind of funny that this is really the first time. Like this is probably this is a very common way for that I see people on YouTube and stuff painting, um, but certainly not a very common way for a professional artist to make a painting. Putting that paint in there so I can see.
So when I'm brushing my finger over the surface like that, what I'm doing is just getting rid of the, those ridges as they build up. Maybe I should show a different angle here. Right, so you see that little bit of extra paint that's built up right there? All right, so I don't want that, so I'm pushing that in. Let's try that again. There we go. Same sort of thing up here. Using that rag to wipe some paint away. Ah. Ah, things are falling off these my hands and my brushes. Okay. Okay, 
just blow dry it. Stop touching it, Michael. Okay. So I'm going to blow dry this, and then we'll see. Do I want to do another coat? Okay, um, where did I see? Uh, Pascaline asks, would masking fluid work for the lines? That is a good question. Um, masking fluid would work, but I, I certainly she did not use that. Um, and my only worry about using masking fluid is that you might get too sharp of lines. Now, that's generally not an issue. And if, I think if you did this painting with masking fluid, I think it would look pretty cool. Uh, I, I keep meaning to do a, an episode, episode with masking fluid, um, but she's just done this just by just very careful kind of painting of those lines and just trying to keep a little gap between the colors. But you could try. Um, so the next thing I'm th just thinking about is... Do I want to do the background again? Because I've got more of this paint. Do I want to do another coat of this or continue painting? Um, okay, so the, the, the difference between painting uh, the, the second coat now versus later so both have their pros and cons painting the um, second coat right now would ensure that the color that I'm using is gonna be exactly the color that is here because I got lots of wet paint there um, and therefore there might not be any discrepancy because so I try to remix that paint later on let's say this dries up uh, I would have to basically just cover everything and make sure I don't, you know, because otherwise you're going to see a difference between those two colors. So there is something to be said about painting it all right now. The negative about painting it all right now is, well, let's say we do paint it all and then we get more painted and we re think, nah, now I don't really, I'm not so happy with the background color. I wish I waited because now I'm gonna have to, I spent all that time doing that second coat and getting all precise. And now I'm gonna have to do another color and probably two coats of that. So it might end up being an, un, the, a, painting that second one now might be unnecessary. Now, I think I might just go ahead and paint that background a second time right now. Um, because I, f I feel fairly confident that I got that color pretty close. If anything, it could have gone maybe a little bit more blue, uh, warm ultramarine blue, because there's almost a bit of a reddish quality in her, her blue, uh, like purpley quality. Um, but I think it's close enough that I don't think I'm going to look at this 20 minutes later, an hour later, and be like, oh, it's totally wrong. What was I thinking? I should have waited. So I think what I'm going to do here is go right into this second coat of paint. Um, 
and the reason why you don't even have to if you if you're happy with enough with the first coat of paint the reason I'm just gonna do a second coat is um, just to make uh, it more solid so that there's um, very little if not no of, uh, amount of the underpainting the imprimatura coming through here so again that's that's why I said um, this particular technique can um, require a little bit more planning or just a great deal of acceptance if it doesn't go the way you want and you're just like ah okay I'm gonna just do it third and a fourth coat of you know, a different, slightly different color. And you know, I, I typically, as people might probably know, I encourage us to go back and forth, back and forth, background, foreground, background, foreground, to avoid that very same, the problem I'm talking about that can arise. painting is kind of different than the way I normally do things. But it's a good idea to shift things up a little bit, try new things, question the way it's things are done. Who knows? I mean, it's possible that you do this kind of painting like this and you're like, whoa! Why haven't I been doing this the whole time? Why was he telling me to do the completely opposite of this? What does he know? <laughs> right? So. I mean, clearly, she knew. I mean, the painting we did on on uh, Tuesday, the her cat, my cat, uh, as she called the painting. Um, clearly, she didn't always paint this way. Um, so one, the natural question is like, well, why why did she take this approach to make this painting? Uh, that's an interesting question. I, I, I'm not really sure why. Uh, well, I mean, not every you know. Every, so there are lots of different artists use different techniques to communicate different ideas. You know, like at uh, one thing. You know, at, at art school, we often you know talk about talk to students about that kind of thing. You know, like they come. You know, we meet with them and they say, this is what I want to do. I want to make this kind of a painting. And you say, oh, that's an interesting idea. But honestly, that sounds more like a sculpture than a painting. Are you sure, like, you sure maybe a different um, material wouldn't be more appropriate for that idea and, and communicate it better, more strongly, more efficiently, it might be faster to do it this way than that way, etc. Obviously, there's lots of artists who, you know, they just make paintings. And, and sometimes that, they're just like, well, there's certain things I can say with my paintings, and there's certain things I just don't feel capable or confident of communicating with my paintings, and maybe um, I'll hire somebody to, to build something for me instead. or collaborate with another artist who's you know, more adept at a different particular material. Or I'll take a class and try to learn a little bit about how to do that so I do feel more confident.
<laughs> Deborah's talking about, are you going to paint an Elvis on black velvet? My aunt loved Elvis and had a painting of him on black velvet. Wow, that is, a, that's a great idea. Not what I was planning on doing. And I've already got uh, all the drawings and stuff done for it, the outline. But there's always next year. That would be pretty funny. Because there's, is there a Elvis song or album, the Black Velvet? Why does that sound so apropos? Black Velvet. I keep thinking of that uh, Alana Miles song. Black Velvet on a little girl's Black Velvet on a woman's on a girl. A new religion that will bring you to your knees. Black Velvet, if you And Alana Miles, also, there's a elvis -y quality to her. Great, another great Canadian musician. Obviously, I don't remember the lyrics of that song, or you won't hear me doing that at karaoke anytime soon. Okay, so I think that's pretty good. There's still, well... I do have a little bit of paint left over if I had to do touch-ups, but not enough to do a third coat. And I don't think I'll need it um, unless everything goes wrong. And if in that case, I maybe I'm going to be doing mixing it again, and I'll probably have to go over everything. But the benefit of having a very simple you know, palette is really, well, it's like there's only a certain number of colors I use to mix this. Right, I to to get that background color, I mixed the black, right, which was cool yellow, cool blue, and warm red, and then I added white to it to make a gray, and then I just added more blue, cool blue, and a little bit of warm blue. So I couldn't, you know, I mean that's four colors plus white in combination got this, and that's. That's not nothing, but it's certainly easier than when if you just say like, well, it could be any of a million colors or 150 tubes of paint that I got on my, my table, right? Uh, let's see how that dries. In fact, maybe let's just hit this with the blow dryer right, right now. Well, you know, I, I mean, I like how that looks right now. As, as I'm like, wow, that's kind of, well, you know, we're, like we're on track. That's good. Um, I'm a little worried about this kind of, that's going to be very thin. It's, it's okay if I end up painting a color right up to another color. There are instances in this painting where she does that anyway. It's just... Um, it's I think as we'll see it's it's tricky to 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 literally have a gap between those the colors um, okay I have to reach across here because this my um, little uh, directional pad or whatever is um, out of battery so it's charging here to reach across my body to do that <laughs> okay so the next step is let's start painting the flowers themselves we've got the background in and knock on wood we, we can let it stay like that and we won't have to touch it it's it's established so probably the first thing that we want to do is paint the the stems and the leaves here uh, because for the most part they're in behind the flower and i always like to 
put those things in behind. Having said that, the way that we are painting today's painting is almost like um, puzzle pieces which interlock. So, you know, technically, we don't want to have any paint from the, the stems overlapping into the white area of the, the petals or the purpley white. But still, I think it, it's a, um, it's a, a you know, an approach that I think I probably want to continue with for today's episode. Okay, so let's mix that cool green or actually that green there is I suspect there's a bit of both greens in here she's using let's just see I, I almost just wonder if she's using our cool blue and warm uh, yellow let's see yeah maybe that's what she's because there is that you can see this warm yellow particularly on the, the leaves at the bottom in this area here it's definitely very close to what I'm starting to mix here so the difference between this green and if I was to mix these two with the cool blue and the cool yellows I would get an even more uh, candy colored uh, very you know lime green and this one here is got a bit more of that slightly more grassy quality in fact I'm gonna take a bit of a little bit of uh, my warm blue and put this in here I don't want to put too much because it'll darken it um, but again I think what she was using here is, is a cobalt blue. Like right now we've got our ultramarine blue, which is a, a very warm blue. And we've got a cerulean blue, which is very cold blue. But there are blues that exist in between here, lots of them. And the, probably the most common is our cobalt blue. So she's, I bet you $100 she's using cobalt blue throughout this painting. Um, but that's the great thing about this palette is I can just mix those two colors together to get that cobalt blue. I don't have to, to add it to my palette. Anyway, let's... Um, you know what? I think I'm going to do a, a mixture that has got more yellow in it to start. have to go down to a smaller brush okay so now hmm. so now we're seeing what's gonna happen when we yeah I feel like now maybe I should have left made this a little bit darker okay so to do I'm gonna lighten it up and this is also going to add a little bit of opacity to the color. So I'm taking a bit of white. I don't want to put too much in there. The white is, is going to dull that color down. So, But it's also going to cover the previous color a little bit more. Kathy says, do we need to buy black velvet for April 1st? 
I, I don't think so. Unless you really want, but I let's uh, let's just hold on. <laughs> I'll I'll, uh, I'll send some instructions um, before there, but you know it certainly would be a fun material to paint on. Like you could make this painting on black velvet. Yeah, that's not quite dark enough, is it? I, hard to tell earlier on but you know I, th I just think to myself maybe yeah, can we make it work So, maybe I should put a bit more white into this mixture and just paint this layer once. see the lighter I go here that's going to make that background those dark the lines in between appear darker in contrast right lighter green at least for this layer is because this layer's got a little bit of white, or it's got a substantial amount of white in there, so that's going to cover up um, the brown a little bit more. doing all of the green just with the same color right now you know just simplify my life a little bit
And this type of approach to painting requires a lot of patience. Um, it's not, uh, you have to kind of take your time. And so for some people, this is, a, you know, a really perfect, like the perfect kind of painting for this kind of could be quite relaxing. And then some other people are just like, oh my goodness, this is just so tedious. Um, in fairness though, it's sort of like, you know, most paintings arrive at a stage kind of like this. It's just a little bit further down the line. You know, when we're doing our final touches and just adding little tiny lines and marks here and there. I guess for me, I love doing this kind of thing, but I don't know if I like doing it for the entire painting. I like having a little bit of more wildness earlier on, and then I can kind of buckle down and get more serious, you know, more refined as we go. This one there's, you know, it's all business <laughs> from the from the outset, right? careful not to wipe too much paint away and accidentally go back down to the brown. makes me wonder if I should put some blue in between there a bit. I think I might just do that. Okay. Okay. 
Kathy says my color is very baby blue. Uh, but I'm not doing it again. <laughs> That's okay. Going for dinner. Yeah, this is, makes me reminds me of our rumpus rooms back in the seventies. Black velvet paintings in the rumpus room. <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting. There was this, like a, a big kind of a fad for a while of velvet paintings, and then that kind of disappeared. Okay, so let's. I was going to take my blue. And I know this is not in the original. So let's blow dry that. since I did two coats of this paint elsewhere. I want to do that here. I don't want this to look just a little bit lighter or darker than everything else. So I'm going to make sure I treat it in the same way I treated everything else. Oh. Huh. Huh. just realizing I should have paid closer attention but <clears throat> that stem is for the flower right there isn't it hmm that's why um, hmm so it doesn't make sense for it to go here. It makes sense for where it, sh it was originally. Hmm. But. Okay. Hmm. Do I, do I want to fix it or do I want to embrace it? I think. It's not that big of a deal. I just wonder, 
Okay, if I, rather than, because it, it, moving that around is, would be a bit of a pain, I could fix it, but it might mean literally painting white, and then painting some brown, and then, like, more problems than it's worth. How can I alter that? That's tricky. If that would need to be where the bottom of that orchid is, right there. So it doesn't make s Darn it. Um, hmm. Hmm. Well... So let's say I did paint that out, move the green over, the blue would have to move over. Okay, well let's, let's see if I can wipe any paint off. Sometimes the surgery is worse than the, the the cure is worse than the disease, as they say, right? So, um,
So, I think I'm getting it back into place. Usually this is one of these things where I usually just be like, ah, let's kind of embrace it. But it's one, I knew that it's, you know, I, it's, I'm glad I caught it now. As frustrating as it would, it is. It's one of those things where I'd rather catch it now than two hours from now when I'm sitting on the couch looking at it. You know, and then I realize, or, oh my goodness, how did I, ah! Managed to kind of rescue that little area, fix it up. Time will tell how um, well I've done. And there's John, says hello. Hi, John. KY Rose says hi. I might go to the white of the flowers next and then come back to the green just for no other reason than it might just help me avoid anything like this before I am fully committed to something so let's um, I think I'm just gonna use all just paint with white to start Okay, so let's get white on the brush. It's also, I rarely just paint with pure white as well, so that's a lot of different things in this painting. She's just made that one big shape rather than dividing it, so... But although, it looks like she... It once was divided.
it's also worth knowing that this is an 8 by 6 the original painting is 8 by 6 inches so it's smaller not quite half the size of this painting but almost you know this is a 9 by 12 so 12 inches so it's you know it's uh, about a th two thirds the size So if you think all of this is kind of hard to do at this scale, imagine going down 30% in scale and trying to pull that off. Another just example of what an incredible artist Henrietta Shore was. Um, Because while this is not, you know, I, I think on the surface, perhaps, this painting looks pretty straightforward, pretty simple. I think it uh, presents some challenges that, that even like a, you know, a great um, academic painter from like, you know, I don't know, like... Uh, Raphael or something or Jacques Louis David would would probably like sneer at it and then you'd say okay we'll paint it Jacques and probably you know a couple of hours in like we're here and would that venerable artist go oh yeah this is turns out to be a little bit more complex than I originally thought my apologies to the artist. Another reason why you want to try to avoid ridges in this particular painting is when we start putting all the other details over top, like we're going to do some shading with purple, is if there's a bunch of uh, ridges and textures in here, the paint is going to kind of pick all that up and it's just going to drive you bonkers. So. You know, as you're going, sometimes just looking from an angle and seeing if there's any areas where this, the paint has left a big edge. You can get your thumb in there and just wipe it away, pick it away.
yeah, you don't make a painting like this if you, unless you know exactly what you're doing. This is... You know, as I said, you know, it's not really the way that I typically paint. I kind of, I prefer something a little bit more that has a bit more improvisational um, space for me to to play around in. Oops. But, you know, as you work, if you decide to work on this painting, you could certainly take a different direction. And you could paint it in whatever approach you want. Also, painting on a, a board that is um, either a, a smooth board where you've gessoed and sanded it down make your life so much easier to do this type of thing. Or painting on paper. Painting on a, on a rougher canvas I could see just driving people bonkers. The more texture you have on here, the more it would be really tough to get into some of the smaller details. So I'm probably going to have to do a second coat of white. 
which you know, is, takes some time. The second coat will go faster than the first one. Because the second one I can kind of, you know, there's maybe parts of it that I can kind of, uh, don't have to be so careful about. We'll see. Getting there. I mean, I love the way this looks so far. And it's only going to get better and better. I mean, potentially she did this painting as an exercise. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. You know, um, artists are always sort of experimenting and trying different approaches. And it's possible that she decided, you know what, I've never done a painting like this. Maybe she saw somebody went to a museum and saw something on display and went back to her studio and thought, let's see if I can do that myself. How hard would that be? I don't think she used this technique very often. says, hey everyone, um, I'm a little delayed, but not by much. Wow, what a beautiful artwork for today with our teacher. I love art acrylic paints. Paul says, hi Michael, how's your rat or mice problem? We are in distress with that now. Have tossed out five mice in three days. Oh my goodness. Oh. Uh, well, I don't want to speak too soon, but I don't hear anything at the moment. Uh, the weather is getting nicer in Vancouver, and I guess I don't want to speak too soon with that either. It was really nice just a few days ago. It got up to like mid-30 for a day, and it was like, wow, summer's here! And then, uh, I think... Mother Nature was like, what's that, sorry? Oh, oh, yeah, no, we're not done. We're not done. We're going to give you another couple good cold snaps. You thought you were going to plant your tomatoes? <laughs> uh, 
uh, how about a little hail and frost? Uh, I got a whole bunch of seeds. I want to plant a garden with our daughter this year, and I'm kind of glad I didn't uh, didn't do it just yet. I think maybe next weekend, next Saturday, and I'm sure that'll be the day of the the great deluge. What's the saying? Man plans, God laughs, or something. <laughs> I think I'm gonna do the the center here yellow. Do I do I wanna do yellow? Or sorry, uh white as well. I think I will, yeah, let's just, because I think it'll just make it easier to, although it could be kind of fun to try to, rather than paint that red inside, to just blend it down from the yellow, but. Okay, well, I think that brings us to the end of today's episode. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, uh, we're not a long way to go, but we're, I'd say we're maybe two-thirds of the way through this painting. dry that just to settle it down and that way when I do the next step I've got a nice um, dried surface to paint on. Okay. Get my other tea going here. So, you know, I the 
I don't have the, the dark lines that she has in between all of these petals. It is more of a kind of a, you know, it's, it's, it's the same color. It's that kind of greenish brown, but hers is definitely like 40% darker. Uh, but I don't mind it so much. And I think as we will go a little bit further, I think it'll, it's going to have its own unique quality. Uh, I think it's going to be totally fine. <laughs> um, okay. Let's, let's go to, okay. So I think, you know, we've established our background. I think knock on wood is done. The foundational layer of our foreground is also done. Now what we're going to do is we're going to darken in and we're going to do some potentially a little bit of glazing to get the the great graduated purple on the the, um, the the petals of the white orchid here. So let's um, maybe let's let's look at this here. What should be our next step? I th let's go to the greens and um, I might, I'm probably going to do a second layer of the same color in a few places, and then we're going to start putting in our darker greens. So let's get that set up. So we're, okay, so that green down there, I'll just get a bit more warm yellow on the palette. Remember, I was, I've been taking this, my cool blue and warm yellow to make this green, which is a color that I, you know, honestly don't use that often. And I didn't mean for it to kind of have that look, but that later I think it was closer it was fine the way it was perhaps uh, but let's leave it and just keep moving forward if I want to fix it it's just easier just to I mean I could wipe it off right now or I could just let it dry and then paint that same color back and I think just painting it back is just easier Sometimes when you try to clean that paint, you end up kind of spreading paint all over the place, and the rag gets dirty. And just let that sit there. I'll let this sit there and think about what it did. What, what were you doing, paint? Very disappointing.
Okay, that feels good. Um, now let's go up into this flower with some, let's take some more um, cool blue. Even a bit of warm blue, which will darken it. We're gonna add more and more of that to get the darker areas. a little more electric of a color than, than what she used, but uh, I think we'll get darker here shortly anyway, so. So that's better. Let's blow dry that.
<laughs> okay. So let's uh, let's start mixing a darker green. So I'm going to take my my warm blue and my warm yellow this time. And we'll add more and more blue. So that's going to give us a much darker green. Okay. And then we'll use some glazing fluid here. I'm even just going to wipe off excess paint to start. All right, this is going to ensure it's going to be a very transparent color. Now, obviously, she was painting with oil paints we're painting with acrylic paint so it's a different kind of process she would could have just blended directly into the paint and probably would have gone much faster than what we're doing in fact looks like I need to add more Very subtle. So let's let's amp that up a bit here. So painting this thin glaze over top of here. This is much more of a grassy green. So it's just going to kind of mute that, the intensity of the previous green that was there for a little bit.
Okay, so let's blow dry that. I'm going to add more of my uh, warm green, it's mostly uh, warm blue to that mixture. is always just to start painting it and glazing just got to be patient let the layer dry work on something else for a short period of time
soften those edges out. Let's just keep on going. Maybe, um, well, let's, uh, yeah, I'll stay out here for just a few more minutes. Let's get more. That darker green. Let's just keep plowing ahead here.
keep getting darker and darker under here. There's very little light, right? I think I'll do one more level of darkness. Take a little bit of that black, a little bit of warm blue. So this will get, you know, about as dark. As, you know, I could get obviously darker, but it, her painting, she doesn't go like black. There's no black in her painting, except one might argue the 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 lines in between those shapes, but. that to dry before I, because it's kind of will be tricky to blend in here without smudging that, so I'll just hold off. That's a little bit too dark. That's okay, but I just want to be careful about that's definitely at the limit that I want to push that area in.
Just want to darken down in here a little bit. Let's take this one last time. In fact, let's put a bit more glazing for that.
Right. Now, what I want to do... Uh, well, actually, I'm going to blow dry the... back the other way just a little bit briefly with a lighter green So glazing isn't just like a one-way street. We can also lighten things up a little bit. Some blow dry So it's just a little bit of that with some white. I 
highlight there. I need a bit of more highlight. Maybe I'll just, it's not really here, but it might be nice to bring that up a bit. Okay, I think I could walk away from the from the leaves at this point and feel pretty happy about how that's turned out. Let's clean some brushes. I'm just going to blow dry that. Let's, uh, let's work on the flowers next. The flower, I'm going to have to come back in with a little bit of uh, white and just clean this up because it's a little bit patchy right now. So, and... Yeah, well, let's, let's just take the white. I was maybe thinking of adding some medium or something because that white is getting kind of uh, chalky and stiff, but uh, maybe a little bit of matte medium. So this is white with matte medium, and they both look white, but one, the matte medium will dry clear, the white will dry opaque, but this is just going to make it way more fluid and make my life easier painting these areas won't be quite as opaque
but that's the kind of the trade-off. Now I could do a couple of layers of thinner, more transparent paint. I think this is going to be fine. sure I got Buddy Holly in my Oh boy. No with me. My love, I'm a kissing. You don't know what you've been a missing, oh boy. Okay, that feels good. So now I think we're ready to put the purple in. So let's uh, let's just clean up these brushes a bit. Oh, 
Although I'm going to mix a little bit of this with purple, so I'm not even going to bother cleaning them. We'll just uh, put them aside. Um, Lisa says, looks so good, and Nikki says, this flower seems to be relatively simple to paint, but I guess not, right? Um, I like this neutral color contrast. It's simple, but delicate. Absolutely, yeah. I think that's one of those things where it's deceptively, well, I don't want to say complicated, it just, it takes some time, because it's very, like, very precise, and... You know, as I was saying earlier, like, you know, it, it's it's almost like we we start from a finished point from the very very beginning, and then, um, whereas some of the other paintings we've done, it you know, we're just sort of being pretty wild and sloppy to start. Here, it kind of be, it's it's precise from beginning to end, which suits some people's personalities and some others maybe a little bit less so. So, you know, by trying a painting like this, you might be like, wow. I really like that. I like I, that's what I need. I'm not such a fan of a little bit of a wilder beginning. I want just to kind of buckle down and just have precision from start to finish. You know, something just to ask yourself as you're working on the painting. Um, buddy says hi again, using my husband's computer while he does taxes on mine. I love the leaves. Uh, Nikki, or Buddy says, Nikki, the things that look simple are usually not. I learnt the hard way. <laughs> oh, okay. So Kathy, oh, okay, so that's, okay, I understand. Get, get you, okay. It's Kathy, it's Kathy, not Buddy. Okay. So let's do purple now. Let's look at the options for purple. Um, I think this is a fairly vibrant purple, so let's get a bit more. Well, you know, maybe I don't, well, let's see how much of this we might need. We're probably not gonna use too much because it's gonna be diluted. So let's take our cool blue and cool, or, warm blue and cool red mix that together yeah let's just make just a little well uh, let's mix it right into this white yeah that's that's pretty much it right there um so i'm going to start with this you know what, let's, yeah, let's, let's make a bit more of it. So maybe we'll just mix it directly into here. I do wonder if I want a little bit of a darker version of it, though. Let's just, let's get a bit of that paint on the palette now, so I don't have to think about it later. Let's mix that same color up. Uh, 
Now, nowhere does she actually use this purple in this level of darkness, but I always, it's kind of nice to have that on hand so that we can, because if we did, we would dilute it, but it's nice to have that diluted, or the non-diluted version, I should say. Darker. Let's go. To, this is a lighter version. Not white. So this is where we're going to start. So I put my glazing fluid there. And we just wipe off a bit of excess paint. We got sort of three levels of darkness. Probably ending here, maybe just a tiny. Well, we'll probably mix that into some of these colors. And so I'm just making sure I've got this nicely mixed in. Use a new blending brush. It's just another brush that I can uh, blend that out. That whole area goes purple. See how kind of quickly, it, I mean, it's supposed to take longer to dry, but, or it can take longer to dry, but it kind of happens quick, so you kind of got to be working quickly. So on camera that looks very subtle. In person I think it's we're, we're we're kind of I think we're pretty close, but obviously there's there's more gradations of color there to come, but
purple thing with purple. And don't worry if you go too far, we can always glaze back the other way with white, right? since this area might be easier to go a little bit purple and then put white down the middle. Okay, good first little step here, that's great. I'm um, just gonna clean this brush off, just sitting here and drying. It's exciting as it starts to come together, right? And, and you know, there's, there's times like, in every painting where you look at it, you know, just think, ooh, I don't know, is this worth even finishing? And then you get to, it's, you just go, like, oh, yeah, let's just see what happens, let's keep going. And then you're like, oh, oh, okay, it's starting to come together again. That's exciting, right? You just have to have faith that it's going to work out. Let's, uh, let's go back again and, and just uh, add to this now. So maybe let's take a little bit of our darker um, purple and bring that back into this color. I'm just gonna be careful getting a little surprise if you had take too much in your brush there wasn't there's barely any there so it's this color should be darker but it uh, shouldn't be dramatically darker
you notice I gotta be kind of quick on that blending, otherwise I start finding there's ridges and that paint starts to kind of settle, set, right? Or not ridges, uh, darker areas. We get kind of like lines that form. Let's blow dry that. So let's go even a step darker. Let's take even some of this darker paint. I think we're probably two more levels away. All right, so we'll take this and then maybe one more.
Okay. Things keep just getting a little bit darker and darker as we go. Let's, uh, let's blow dry that, and I think we'll do just one more layer now of the much darker purple. Kathy asks, is the blending brush, does it have softer bristles? Mine leaves hairs behind in the paint, so I threw it away. Frustrating. Um, it doesn't have, to, I mean, it should be a little bit softer. I mean, I just, this is the same brush, or um, not the exact same brush, but the, the same size of brush that I used to do a bunch of the painting with. I just have a few of them. And, you know, I do find that sometimes as they get older, you know, they, they tend to kind of splay outward a little bit, and that works perfect for a blending brush. Um, another brush that you can use for this same activity is what's called a mop brush. So that's what a mop brush looks like when you buy it brand new. Uh, and it's, it's really for watercolor for doing a big wash at the beginning. And then this is what happens to it after you use it for a bunch of blending. It kind of splays out like that. Um, I tend to, the, those are great for larger areas of blending. Um, I kind of, some of these work better for kind of a, a little bit of a smaller area. Um, it definitely helps for it to be softer. If you're, if you're, if hairs are coming out of your brush, it's probably a sign that that brush is, is maybe not that high of quality or it's just had a, you know, had a, uh, had a good run and it's time to retire and and let it uh, um, sit peacefully in your painting kit um, until you need to do something really hard with it like you need to just scrape paint around and and it'll be like oh perfect this is what I I can do <laughs> um, okay so I'm taking my much darker purple and let's Bring this in here. Let's take a bit of glazed fluid. It doesn't look that dark, you know, c compared to the other colors, but compared to what we have on our palette, it's it's like black, right? So you just want to be careful about going too far, because. I mean, ideally, we could do five more steps, just slowly getting darker and darker and darker. I'm going to try to do this in ideally one or two steps at the most. Um, let's just remove that excess paint. darker we'll see oh maybe it's fine So 
So again, as I'm doing this, I'm getting the, the area that I'm painting, it becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. I'm going deeper and deeper into the darker areas. Um, I don't even know if I can, maybe. Just a little bit around that edge. You know, my purple is definitely lighter and more saturated. A little, yeah, so it's probably a little bit more cool blue and cool red would get a little closer. So maybe we'll blow dry that and then we'll, uh, we'll just introduce a little bit of a darker purple. Okay, I think I'm just going to go right to this dark color here. Well, let's, let's mix a bit more of it. Let's take a bit of cool blue. pretty dark. I mean, that's, that's a leap, quantum leap forward in terms of the darkness level on here. So we really just want to be very careful about where I paint this. 
so maybe let's start over here. So I'm going to blow dry that, and then I'm just going to do some fine detailing with this, and then we're going to do the center. We're getting close. do a little bit of outlining you know, just a couple of places with this purple Thank you. 
just kind of going around this area here, a little bit of purple, filling in a gap. This is also, by the by the way, this this is the same glaze that I was just using earlier. I'm just maybe using a bit more concentrated version of it.
let's just take a look. Zoom back out a bit. <clears throat> it's looking okay. I'll blow dry that and then... Um, Probably move on. Maybe I just see a few little touch-ups I just want to make with a bit of white. Right before I go to the blow dryer. Got a little bit of my blue. Just a few little areas there that I you know, went over into my background, just cleaning that up. Feels kind of nice. the benefit of making just a little bit of extra of your background color that you can use to tidy things up if need be.
Okay, so maybe So it's time to do some finishing touches and really the, the last thing I want to do is the center of the orchid the yellowy orange area. Let's just take a quick look at how that looks and that's uh, that, that'll get us pretty close to the end of the painting right so we're just going to do this area inside and that area is a um, cool yellow and white blending down to a warm yellow and then a warm yellow and orange so take our cool yellow and white uh, we'll even, yeah we'll do a little bit of glazing here Let's take some warm yellow. In fact, I should probably blow dry that, right? As much as I want to just brace it. Super smart of me to use that purple brush. Okay. Let's take a bit of warm red. You can see I just I mean, there's barely any on there, right? Should have blow dried that, shouldn't I?
to my um, warm yellow. Okay, um, I just want to get that purple back and just quickly outline. Uh, do, or do I have any of that purple? Yeah, let's see if I have a bit left here. It's almost totally dry, but let's see if we can just take this one a bit of it to
just toying with this little area, super insignificant. It's just driving me crazy. Okay, so let's let's do our side by side comparison. Um, okay, so let's uh, let's take a look at these paintings side by side, see how they turned out, how we feel about them, and are we ready to walk away? Uh, before we do so, just of course uh, like the video if you like the video. Um, if not, just don't do anything. <laughs> I don't know why you're still watching, but uh, uh, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and. Um, Take a photograph of today's artwork. Upload it to the Facebook group. On Tuesday, we're finally doing our feedback episode. I know I was talking about doing it today, but I just there's so much stuff there on the Facebook group that it's taken me way longer than expected. Um, also, if you want to leave a donation, you can use the PayPal. You can use the Super Chat, even though they take like 40% of whatever you donate. Um, you can use the e-transfer um, by sending an indirect e-transfer through my email. My email's on the Facebook group and my and the website. All of those links are down below. Um, you can also contact me through the Facebook group and my email, of course, just uh, for whatever reason you might have. Um, so, let's see. Drum roll. There's, oops, that's the original. And uh, version that we just did there together. So, um, oh, do I want to put her signature in here? Maybe. I, I mean, just I can just sort of look at this on its own for right now and just sort of think about what's worked. Uh, the colors, the, the purple here is a little bit different. I made a decision to use my most saturated purple, which is my cool red and my warm blue. And that gets me like a really candy, almost Easter egg kind of purple. Uh, so I don't mind that. I like really saturated colors, but really probably I would have benefited from using cold red and cold blue or warm red and warm blue which have, which would have taken some of the intensity of that color right the saturation of that color down which is what we see on the left a little bit more of a grayish purple um, I don't mind that like that I think probably you know in comparison I think hers has a greater degree of subtlety that mine doesn't have um, you know, even the leaves here have a bit of a cooler green, that bit more saturated green, whereas she's used um, a bit more of a grassy green. Even though I did use cool blue and warm yellow, I still, you know, might have been able just to go directly to warm yellow and warm blue. So, I mean, there's, there are some little differences there. Let's let's just zoom in and kind of take a walk around this painting. So yeah, I mean, it is tricky to, it's, it's, talk about requiring restraint, right? To leave that original brown in Prematura that we put down there and to just leave it and not paint color edge to edge, that takes like, oh, it's, it's hard to just, you know, you, you think it looks like it's, it's maybe a little bit lazy, like, why didn't they just paint, but it, you realize when you start doing it, wow. That's, that's hard to do, um, because, I don't know about you, my compulsion, my, my, my uh, instinct is just to fill it right up.
mean, I'm glad that I made that little change. Remember there was, I had actually painted the stem going right up and there was a little bit of I painted even some blue in between the stem and the bottom part of the iris here. And then I realized, ah, that's actually what connects the flower to the rest of the, the plant here. And so I, you know, I painted that out and moved it over. I, I had to, not only I painted it out, but then I had to put white there and then I put some brown back in there and uh, but I'm glad I did that you know I, at the moment I was thinking ah let's just leave it and move on but I think it would have been really weird without it and I probably would have you know regretted it so I'm, it's it took a little bit of time it probably took me set me back half an hour but you know when you're gonna spend you know uh, four hours on a painting it's like wow well, what's an extra half hour right Maybe they'll put her signature in here after all. So let's just think about like what the most appropriate color would be. You know, she didn't just use black. She's got kind of, it's like a cool blue going on there. So let's take cool blue. It's got a little bit of black. And I'm even going to add just a little bit of glazing fluid to, to make it a little bit more transparent. Because even though I like that color, I think if we paint it, it's going to be, you know, maybe just a little bit too dark.
I know I'm taking my time here, but you know, it's, this is also like the last little part of the painting, and it, uh, you know, I, I don't really have much of an opportunity to, I can't really paint it out, otherwise I'd have to redo the whole background color, so it's worth just being a bit patient. And, Getting it right. Remember, one of my favorite quotes is, we're in a hurry, take your time. Right, we don't have the time to fix it, so do it right the first time. Lolly in the chat there. Lolly, it's got to be like five in the morning. <laughs> it's nice to see you in the chat, but boy, oh boy. Um, let's look at them zoomed out there. And thanks for the donation too, Lolly. That's so sweet. So I did make a decision just to raise it up a little bit um, than what she did, just because I have these frames that I have up there and, and they crop like about an inch around. So that way it's, it's not gonna get hidden and it'll be uh, on display. So that feels pretty good. I like that. Maybe, uh, maybe I could have, <laughs> been a little bit light more uh, light handed on that purple and gone for something a little bit more muted um, <laughs> uh, awesome great to see you in the wow you were I, I missed must missed a whole bunch of the chat there cool well, I'm glad everyone had a chance to catch up. Okay, thank you, everyone. We'll see you guys on Tuesday. Um, I won't be painting. I'm going to be looking at your paintings. I'm excited for that. It's been a long time, like five months or so, since we've done our feedback episode. And I'm excited to take a bit of... I tried to do it for today. Ran out of time because there's just so much. And that's why we're doing today's painting. But, hey, I wanted to do the painting anyway, and I couldn't think of when to do it. So we've done it. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, or maybe Monday morning for some of you on the other side of the world. We'll see you guys on Tuesday. Have a great night, great morning, and we shall see you very soon. Upload your painting to the Facebook group. I can't wait to see how it turned out. Good night, everybody. <laughs> wow, that feels satisfying. Oh, I just realized that music was loud. Oh, I just that realized music. that music was loud. That oh my goodness. Of course, just a little bit of chaos right at the end.